Hey, this is Eric Sloof over at NT Pro.nl and in this video I'm going to show you some advanced vCloud Director Networking under version 5.1. So let's start with showing my physical and partially virtual environment. I'm running all my virtual machines on a physical box, esx.ntpro.local. It's a pretty large box with a lot of memory, a lot of CPU, and I've created a nested environment. So my ESX hosts that are uh, creating the cluster for vCloud Director are actually virtual machines, virtual machines with two virtual CPUs and 32 gigabytes of memory. Those virtual machines are equipped with a lot of virtual network adapters. And one virtual network adapter is used to get access to the uh, to the management console of the virtual machine and the other ones are used for vCloud isolated networks and for iSCSI and a lot of other things. So I'm going to show you how I created those uh, networks for the ESX hosts. What I did is that I went to my ESX box and when I'm going to configuration networking I'm using VMNIC1 and VMNIC2 for my normal VM network. So uh, this is also the IP address where my ESX hosts can be reached for the management. And I created two additional switches and those switches are used as a backbone, as a network for uh, the distributed switch and the distributed switch uh, creates uh, a switch on this uh, standard switch and you see right here that ESX1, ESX3 and ESX2 are connected to this standard switch. So what I did is when I hop over to the ESX host, the virtual nested ESX host and I'm going to network configuration and I'm going to the distributed switch, you will see that I've created two uh, distributed switches and those switches are actually using uh, the virtual network adapters I connected to the standard switch. So in this case I have a distributed switch uh, for the VLAN CDNI and it's connected to VMNIC2 on ESX host 1. So when I'm going to ESX host 01 and I'm going to look at the properties of this virtual machine I will see that VMIC2 is connected to the vCloud isolated VLAN 1500. And when I'm going to my physical ESX box and I'm going to the configuration and to my standard switch, I can see the same right here. This is the virtual switch I've created. The MTU size is 1500, 120 ports. And what I did is that I have placed promiscuous mode on accept. Something didn't work and that fixed uh, the issue. This is the port group that, that turns out to be the backbone for my uh, virtual environment. And this is in trunk mode because uh, on the distributed switch, port groups, distributed port groups are created on the fly with different VLAN IDs. And this is just like a physical switch with all trunks open, all trunks configured on the trunk ports. The other switch is also very interesting because this one is used for VCDNI and it's uh, a, a, a double encapsulation of a VLAN ID and I had to put in a, a trunk port and I created a, a bigger MTU size on this switch. The MTU size is 1525 instead of uh, 1500 to be able to put in the extra MAC address. So both port groups, both switches are created, both port groups are used by my virtual nested ESX servers. These are the virtual machines, these are the virtual the ESX hosts in a cluster. On top of this cluster there's a resource pool created called Cloud and within Cloud uh, all the different organization resource pool, child resource pools are created. So when I'm hopping to vCloud Director, I'm going to show you uh, the vCloud Director uh, environment. And what I did is that I created an organization, Organization Sleuth, and the organization has two uh, organization VDCs. So uh, one VDC is called Sleuth Prod, the other one is called Sleuth Test.ini, and both organization VDCs are part 
of an external provider VDC. And the external provider VDC is created on top of my cluster. It's called NTPro. And this external provider VDC have some external networks. This is the internet. And this is, in fact, the network that is connected to the port group VM network on my standard switch. So all the virtual machines with access to internet prod are actually connected to my home network and they actually have uh, internet access. Uh, created a storage profile. The storage profile is ISCUSI and I, there are some data stores available, only one. And the three hosts that I just showed you in the vSphere client are also available out here. And I have two organization VDCs. When I'm going to this organization VDC, Sloof Prod, then uh, in this organization VDC, I'm hosting a VApp. And what I want to show you is that this VApp is using two different kinds of, of networking. It's using a direct connection to an organization network, and it's using a fenced network for a VApp. So first of all, all networking, all networking is done on edge gateways. And for uh, this organization, there's one edge gateway available. It's called test. There's one organization VDC configured on this organization because the other edge device is used for the other organization. When I'm going to organization VDC networks, I can see that I have created a network called Achtertuin instead of Achtertuin. That's uh, just a typo. This network is available for organization Sleuth Prod. And it has the gateway uh, 19254. It's routed and it's connected to uh, Edge Gateway Test. So this network is pretty interesting because this is an organization network that is not isolated. It can be used by all the VApps within the organization. And a VApp can create a direct connection or a fenced connection to this organization network. So when I'm going to this VApp, I'm jumping into this VApp, I can go to the networking tab, and you will see what I mean. I have two virtual machines, sorry, I have to go to the diagram. I have two virtual machines, one XP machine is connected to uh, the organization network right here. And let's see if I can show you some configuration stuff. Uh, IP config slash all. So it has the IP address 192.168.19.15. And the other virtual machine is hosted behind a fence. You see the fence right here. And when I'm going to this virtual machine, you will see that it has an IP address of 172.16.110. That's pretty interesting because when I'm going to networking, I will see that the internal VApp network is indeed 172.16.11. And if I'm going to the IP allocations of this network, you will see that it starts handing out addresses at 10. I think I configured something like from 10 till 20 or so. Let's go to the properties of this network. Uh, the network specification, yeah, from 10 till 20 will be handed out by this virtual machine. So this virtual machine must be able to go to the internet. So I have enabled net routing. So this virtual machine can go through this V-Shield Edge device through the organization network. But before I'm going to show that, first let's go to this virtual machine. Because this virtual machine is directly connected to the organization network. And when I'm going to networking again, and I'm going to my organization network after time, you see that there is no possibility to configure any services right here. There are IP allocations. Uh, so I see that 990.15 is handed out to the Windows XP machine, but you cannot configure DNet routing rules right here. You have to do it at the V-Shield Edge device. And it's, it's a bit logical when you think about it, but uh, I had to search for it before I finally found it. So I'm going back to home. I'm going to manage my virtual data centers. I'm going to select Sleuth Prod, and I'm going to my organization VDC networks. And from here, I am uh, capable of configuring services. So what I did on this uh, VShield Edge device 
is that I created uh, a source netting rule and the uh, virtual machine with one with 192.168.90.50 is created with a source net and it's presented as 192.168.260. Any, any, so I should be able to browse the internet from this virtual machine because this is the range that is always also available in the VM network and it's my internet range. So let's check it out. Uh, if my virtual machine with Windows XP on it is able to uh, to browse the internet. I already tested this, so it should be working. Let's see. Internet Explorer, and it's going to the default page, Microsoft.com, and it's showing me Microsoft's website. Okay, that works. So the other virtual machine is pretty interesting because that's the one that is behind a firewall. And the other virtual machine must also be able to go to the internet or do some nifty things. I haven't figured out what to do with it. So let's go to the VMs. Let's go to the other machine. This address was 172.16.110. And uh, I don't know what's the physical address or what's the real address on the outside because this is still in the VM. Uh, I am able to ping to the Google name server, I think. Let's try. No, I'm not able to ping to the outside world. Okay, so let's find out what's what's causing this behavior. Um, in this V app, I'm going to investigate what's the outside IP address of the 172 machine. So 172.16.110. Uh, I can configure services because this is another appliance and when I'm going to NAT I will see that this address is mapped to 192.168.90.14 so if 90.14 hasn't access to the real internet I'm not able to go to the outside world so let's check in uh, let's check at the after time network again and see if that address is added to the table. Sloofprot, organization VDC networks, configure services, net. So I see that there is a 12 address right here, there's a 15 address, but not a 14 address. I'm going to change this address from 12 into 14 and I'm going to give it uh, another try okay let's go to my virtual appliance again my virtual machine again and let's see if it works right now it should work but it still doesn't ah there it is okay so this is quite interesting but you saw. You also saw another rule. Uh, I created a, not not only a source net but also a destination net rule. So let's go back to uh, let's go back to the vCloud director. And uh, when I'm going to my after time again, I'm going to configure services. You will see that I created a rule, and this rule is an S a DNet rule. So these are two source net rules. And it means that traffic from within a virtual machine is going to the outside world. But when I'm hosting a web server in a virtual machine, I can also create a DNet rule, a destination net rule. And this address is listening on 160 and all the traffic that comes in at port 80 at address 192.168.2.160 is redirected to 192.168.19.14. Hmm, that's interesting because that virtual machine got access to the outside world and I was able to ping to the outside world but am I also able to browse an HTTP server on that virtual machine? It's living behind uh, a, v -app, a shielded VApp network. So let's give it a try. Let's go to 192.168.260 but before we do that first let's, let's try it with 192.168.90.14 so I'm going to this virtual machine and I'm going to the neighbor 
192.168.90.14 and I should be able to browse on the web server I've installed on that machine so you will see that there is a strange word here please include your webber page and let's go to the other machine and see if I actually configured webber as something in this web server so there, I've installed a web server but to prove to you that this host is actually running a web server I'm going to see program files to the abyss web server and there is an HTTP docs document right here and what I did is that I uh, I went to this index page and I added an extra character right here. Should be able to find the word Weber somewhere. Weber, there it is. This is your Weber page. So this is the virtual machine that is actually used to, hold, to host uh, uh, the little internet server. And I'm able to go from the neighbor to the other machine. So this is the neighbor, and I'm able to to access the the HTTP server behind uh, the fence network. So what I did, let's go to the to the to the VApps again, and going to show you in the in the network diagram what happened here, is that I went from the virtual machine that is connected directly to the internet, oh, and I went through the organization network and I went through the VApp uh, shield and I went into this virtual machine because I created uh, a rule right here on this machine. Cool. Let's check if the rule is really created. So let's go to networking, to the internal virtual appliance, configure services, there is a net rule created. So when I'm going to net I see that uh, the virtual machine 172.16.1.10 is mapped to 90.40. Great. So, the other way around must also work when I'm going to my desktop. Yeah, let's give it a try. Let's open another page on my desktop. Let's actually start Internet Explorer and go to 192. 168 to 160 and there it is again Weber so this time I went both through the organization network and to the v through the V app so that's interesting I passed both the uh, edge appliances and I'm now in 192 or multiple adapters on the net supply because the edge appliances are not uh, deployed for every individual V app anymore sometimes multiple NICs are used within the same ad appliance. If you want to see how the ad appliance is configured, you can go to your VShield plugin. And if you are actually uh, logging on to VShield with uh, admin default, you can also see what's happening in the backside. When I'm going to data centers, uh, I'm going to Papendrecht, Biesenhaak, and then you can see what's happening on your uh, vShield manager. But I would recommend to configure vShield from vCloud Director and not the other way around, but there's also a possibility to view it from, uh, from here. Okay, so that was some advanced networking within vCloud Director. Eric Sloof is signing off. Bye-bye.